my name is Sean Michael Walker with Premier Group Insurance. Uh, today, this is really just a video introduction because uh, most of this video, the body of this video, is going to be content that was filmed in October 2019 at our 2020 Vision Conference. And uh, in that, in that, uh, in this video footage, what you'll be seeing is an agency panel discussion led by me, where we talk about the five pillars of agency success. And what is, what you'll see is you'll see four of Premier's uh, biggest and brightest agents uh, talk about the five pillars and things that they do from their perspective to have wild success within the insurance industry. And, uh, and I wanna share that with you because it's just full of so many nuggets, beautiful nuggets of information that they are openly and willingly sharing with us, the world. So uh, I wanna get this out to y'all and see what y'all think. See, see if uh, what they say resonates with you or, uh, or see um, if you agree with it or disagree with it. Either way, I would love to hear you in your comments below. Have a wonderful day, thanks, bye-bye. Each one of these guys, you probably recognize these faces. If you look at our Hall of Fame in the hall, um, they're, on, they're on these posters. And so I'm just gonna let them introduce themselves very quickly. We got a lot of questions to go through, a lot of content. If they start pontificating, I'm rude enough to just go, uh, 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 we, uh, you lost us, we're, we're done listening, on to the next person. But I want you guys to uh, introduce yourselves and let them know who you are, okay? Hello, whoa, that's loud, all right. <laughs> Uh, my name is Chris Long, Longevity Insurance Brokers. I started my brokerage with PGI October, no, October 2013, that sounds right. Uh, I was a farmer's agent for five years prior to that. Chris Long was the first agent I ever turned on. I'm basically the reason he's still here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and uh, my agency is in Denver. I'm Brian Brockman. I'll try to keep it down a little bit. Uh, my wife Nancy and I, we started our PGI agency six years ago in December of 2013. And we're in McKinney, Texas. Hi, I'm Steve Eller um, from Fort Collins and Lakewood. Got a couple agencies here. I've been with Premier since uh, September of 2008. So, uh, yeah, it's a longevity clause. Huh? Oh, I, uh, I worked with farmers where I started out as a captive agent, so much like Chris did. Hello, everyone. Jeff Blickfelt with Spirion Insurance Solutions. I, too, was a farmer's agent, um, so common theme here. Uh, I started with PGI uh, 2012. It took me a little while to get rolling, but then we got things going good, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. So... Once you kind of get started going, you know, you get these pipelines. My pipelines are very similar to theirs, actually. So you're going to start getting people calling you, and you have to say, I can't do this one, right? I'm going to send it to a new guy, someone else a little hungrier. Um, as you get larger, uh, the loss ratios are going to be a huge factor with carriers for you. They're going to start coming by. They're going to talk to you, beat you up on it. If things aren't going well, you know, they could put some restrictions on you. So you want to keep after that. So you want to be able to determine... Is this guy going to be a good fit? Is he going to be long term? Or am I just flat out wasting my time, right? So if you generate 100 leads, then you can say no to five of them and still have 95 to work, right? So that's kind of the biggest factor there is uh, just making sure, do you want that house that's missing some siding and paint? Or do we just want to let farmers in Allstate win it and take that claim when it comes? So, so that's something that uh, has been a big focus for us this year. Um, I really think that retention is huge. Obviously, the the best customers are the ones that you already have. And it's really a hard balance between spending too much time trying to reshop and do all these things. So uh, what we're really trying to focus more is on annual reviews right now uh, and claims. So when a claim comes into our office, we set off a, we trigger a, a three to four campaign, email campaign, um, but also an immediate phone call. Uh, are you okay? Is everyone okay? What's happened? And then we lay out the expectations for the claims because most times, uh, claims problems are just miscommunications between them and the adjuster. And then for the annual review, we're really focusing, we're just really getting off price altogether. Uh, we want to talk about the coverages that they have, the holes in their policy, the discounts that they either have or maybe or potentially could have. Um, we want to talk about the, the technology that's available to them, whether it's uh, an online app or our website access or um, you know, we're working with the Travelers and Safeco Service Centers. 
so 24-hour service. So we focus on all these different things that are benefits to them. And then, of course, when a really large rate increase comes in, sometimes we have to do the reshot, but we really try to get off of that altogether. Right, so we have, you know, EasyLinks has been huge for us. We can get in, track sales, go through, we can bridge over, we can see it live time. I use a little thing called Mikogo. Uh, it's M-I-K-O-G-O, -O, and it's screen sharing. So, you know, you can get on your screen or they can get on their screen, and you can help direct, click this button, click that button. Um, that's been really helpful. The what phone. Is that? is that for training staff? Yeah, yeah. Who are you sharing the screen with? With my staff. Okay. Yeah, hey, let's do this dwelling fire, or let's point out these problems, uh, what's your error say? You can do it on any screen that's on their computer. So um, the VoIP phone systems is huge. I've had that for a really long time. Um, it's just good for conferencing, transferring, just like these guys said, you call my office, and mine's gonna ring to a live person first, then it's gonna kick over to some options that'll, it's not gonna take you to carriers, but it's just gonna kind of give us some more time, buy us some time, and uh, kind of screen the calls to certain people. Um, we use, a, we use a, a little app called Hangouts for texting in our email, and it's a Gmail product, but it pops up live time, and so they can ask live questions when they're sitting with somebody. If they don't know the answer, they don't have to hang up or interrupt the sales process. That, hey, Steve, how's this work? Boom, yes or no, done. So. Uh, let's see. Well, there's definitely a few different sources. Um, like Jeff, I have four mortgage brokers that I have absolutely locked down that are really big producers. Denver's obviously a really hot housing market, so I mean, this summer was just, was great. I mean, I had a ton of people coming in uh, as far as, you know, new home buyers or people refinancing. Um, so I'd say if you can lock down even just three really good producing loan officers, instead of trying to get 10 that are okay, get three, really develop that relationship. I mean, that's been huge for me. I've known one of them since I was with farmers back when I was in a B&I group a long, long time ago. Um, and then also, I'm pretty tenacious when it comes to referrals. I, you know, have a really locked-in system for requesting referrals, where you know you get a form email from me 30 days after they after we do business. Um, I just constantly sort of have a drip campaign where it's coming up, so I get a good deal of referrals. And you know, if you do a really good job for people and you save the money, you're quick, you're responsive, you're knowledgeable. Um, I handle everything switching over their mortgage company. I handle canceling everything. I do absolutely everything for them. If you do a good job for people, they'll refer you, and that's what it comes down to. So, you know, do right by your customers, work hard, and uh, you'll get that pipeline filled pretty quickly. Reiterating what he said, uh, basically, if you look at the internet lead business, there are 10 times more auto leads than home leads. So if you're chasing auto business, it's going to be better quality, better availability, everything. Uh, with home, it's so limited because it's only 10% of what you get from auto. So you've got to be much savvier in how you do it. That's another reason why it's good to go statewide as opposed to trying to go like one zip code or one county. Uh, and then you constantly have to shop, look for the good deals. Uh, you can call most of these guys and you tell them, hey, I've got $1,000, will you match it? And so all of a sudden you've got $2,000 with the leads. Then you go to Nationwide, you fill out the co-op with Kelsey, and next thing you know, you're paying $500 for $2,000 worth of leads. So if they're sending you crap, you know, you can sift through it real quickly and figure out what's the right stuff. You know, who are the people you really want to close? And kind of like what you said, you, you pick through it. You don't, you don't want to quote the guy with the bad siding, the pit bull, the trampoline, and that's always the same person. It's, it's never, you know, one thing, it's always three, yeah. So, so basically, I mean, it's just a numbers game. That's all it is. Uh, I'd mentioned that in our first eight months, there were, there were months where we spent $2,000. We brought in 200 leads, but I somehow got 150 quotes out of it. And... So I was running seven, eight quotes a day, binding three policies, and I mean, it's just, it's only a numbers game. So if you're somebody who's trying to get started, you just have to act like your hair's on fire and just come out after it. And the internet leads aren't always gonna be that great. I do filter them heavily, so I'm not dealing with a lot of the older homes. We try to focus on newer homes, because those are the ones where we can, uh, we can basically reverse engineer. So, you know, once we sell that person, they're doing the home closing, then it's, hey, I'll, I'll handle all this. Just give me your, your loan officer's contact info. And then you're, you're, you're getting them into the drip campaign, which is kind of what you're, you're getting at is, you know, you're, you're putting the customer and the loan officer both into drip campaigns. So I think I'm the only one on the, on the panel that uh, likes the service centers. But I'll tell you that um, we flew up to, to Washington and to Denver 
and we met with all the people that, that managed both service centers for tra uh, Safeco and Travelers. And uh, we also listened in on their calls, and I can tell you they're outstanding. Uh, their training is better, uh, just, just clearly, honestly, their training is better than ours. They're better at it than our people were. And the culture in our office is, is sales. So we, wanna, we want our people to be thinking about sales. Um, they are trained at the service centers that if there's any kind of problem, any kind of pushback, that they do transfer those calls back to us. And that's where we get in and maybe we have to do a reshop or something like that. Um, the other thing too is we get notifications so that we can send an automated email or a voicemail drop that says, hey, um, you know, from the assigned agent that says, hey, just wanna check in. I know you called the other day. I wanna make sure you got everything taken care of. And my feeling is that um, Amazon and Redbox and Netflix have proven one thing, which is people want easy. They want fast. And this, they're faster, they're easier, they're gonna answer every single phone call where we might not, we might be busy, there might be two or three people on the phone. Um, so that's just my feeling, you know, but you have to decide how it fits your agency, so. So, uh, so to me, I never was a fan of service centers. I was actually on the carrier side for a decade and my carrier actually, you know, they wanted me to go push service centers, but I never got the pitch, right? So uh, I never became a fan. I was actually very, uh, Rex is a big fan of service centers, and so we actually always play good cop, bad cop with the carriers, kind of like, uh, you know, this is good, and I'm going, I don't know, and, and then we negotiate the rate down for you guys so that you guys can participate in the service centers at a, at a much lower rate than the normal 2%. Uh, operational best practices. So it just comes down to accountability, right? So everything's with reports. We run a lot of Google Sheets that are live time. So we can go in at any point and check on the work. Uh, if you have a producer spreadsheet and he says he's written 10 apps, you can go in there and make sure they'll have signatures, documentation upload, whatever you got going. So the accountability, it also comes into sales that way. And so we have now, I used to be a uh, cat herder. If the phone rang, whoever answered it, start to finish. So now we've got specific duties so you know if it's over your range with your limitation you got to get it off to your partner who can handle it um, and that helps just diversify it a little bit keep everybody doing some specific tasks but then they have specific things for those tasks to be accountable for so um, that's the biggest thing just holding people accountable and actually following through even if you're the agency owner you have your own tasks you got to follow through on it well um, I think it starts with your carrier reps so just like us, they all have a job to do, and they have that job is to come out and meet with you and talk about your numbers and their um, new products or initiatives or things that come out. And I think it's important to try to support them. You know, it obviously it's inconvenient when we have to stop what we're doing and sit down and talk about what this, you know, loss ratios and new business and all that. But that's their job, so we need to help them do their job so that when we need them to help our us do our job, they're there. Um, I would say another really important thing is pick your battles. Um, there, I mean, we could complain to our carrier reps and our underwriters and all these people over and over every day. We have 100 things we can complain about. But if you complain too much, they're not gonna listen to you anymore. They're gonna tune you out, and then when you really need them, they're not gonna be there. So we have a positive relationship with really all of our carrier reps, except for one former carrier rep. Um, uh, and that's because we work with them and we listen to them. We let, you know, we understand what they need and they understand what we need. Um, you know, and we also engage, you know, what, what kind of ideas do you have for us? You know, whether one of our reps was talking about um, going after associations and groups where you can create like a group plan and then possibly insure thousands of people at one time. You know, so just engage them on their ideas, make them feel important about what you're doing, work with them so that they can be good at their job and they'll help you when you need them on, it, on the other end. In addition to everything that I just said, be on the lookout for what premier events are coming your way because we've got a lot up our sleeve. Uh, our conference in 2019 was just the beginning. We have a lot up our sleeve and I want you to be on the lookout for what is coming to you locally, what, what you could potentially come to here in Colorado and, uh, and be on the lookout for that stuff. Thanks, bye-bye.